Hey, howdy, hey, Anatomy Super Friends. I'm Dr. Blake Martin from drblake.ca here with another Anatomy Quick Bit. And today I'd like to talk about the spine, the vertebral column, a collection of 24 bones, seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, that protects the spinal cord as it carries information to the brain from the rest of the body and to the rest of the body from the brain. It also prevents your head from bumping against your butt when you walk. So it's a very important piece of apparatus in your body. Each vertebra or bone in the vertebral column is covered with a series of bumps and nodules called processes. These processes allow for the attachment of muscles, tendons, and ligaments to the vertebrae so that it will allow for some movement and prevent others. The processes also allow for the safe exit of nerves from between adjacent vertebral uh, members. The processes have different names. The spinous processes run straight down the center of the spine and they stick out like a spine and therefore they are called spinous processes. Transverse processes stick out to the side of each vertebra. Between each vertebral segment there's a little disc called an intervertebral disc and this disc uh, permits movements between adjacent uh, vertebral segments and it also acts as a shock absorber, preventing the translation of forces upward or downward through your spine. It's a cartilaginous joint, meaning it's largely made out of cartilage, and it has a tough outer ring called the annulus fibrosus, and it's got a soft, goopy center uh, called the nucleus pulposus, which means goopy center. The intervertebral disc is not the only show in town, joint-wise, though, for each vertebral segment. You also have two superior and two inferior articular facets. These are synovial joints, much like your elbows or shoulders. They have shiny surfaces on each of the articular uh, surfaces uh, made up of hyaline cartilage. They're surrounded by a little bag um, of uh, connective tissue that has inside of it synovial fluid, a lubricating fluid between each joint. Because of the arrangement of articular facets, processes, and other anatomical features, the vertebral column, lumbar, thoracic, and cervical regions each have their own specialization in terms of movement. The cervical spine has fairly sticky out spinous processes, and so it has somewhat limited uh, hyperextension. It might be 50 degrees, and it has great flexion, about 80 degrees. The, the articular facets are very flat, and so they allow for a considerable rotation uh, of the spine. We have about uh, 80 degrees in each direction, and we also have really great lateral flexion, about 45 degrees in each direction. The thoracic spine, by contrast, has spinous processes that stick out quite a bit, and they overlap, they overhang one another, and this prevents uh, hyperextension of the spine uh, to about 25 degrees. It has ribs that prevent movement in the lateral plane, and so we have lateral flexion to the tune of about 10 degrees on each side. And in the front, we have this huge bony thing called the sternum. And the sternum limits flexion of the spine in this area to about zero degrees, which is great for your heart and your lungs because you don't want to crush them or collapse them in any way. What we have in great uh, quantity in the thoracic spine, but I can't do it with Oscar here, is we have 35 degrees rotation, which is a lot. In the lumbar spine, story is different again. The spinous processes stick more directly out, and they allow for about 35 degrees of uh, hyperextension or extension, and uh, they allow for uh, the, there's about 65 degrees of flexion, uh, although little Oscar can't do that really here. Um, we have reasonable lateral flexion, about 15 degrees on each side, maybe a little bit more. Um, we can go pretty far. And, uh, but what we can't do is we can't do a great deal of rotation in the lumbar spine. Still, the entire vertebral column in all of its glory can accomplish some pretty amazing things. All you need to do is watch a belly dancer undulating her torso, or watch someone balancing on a slack line to see the glorious nuance and ability that the spine brings to our movements. I'm Dr. Blake Martin. This has been an Anatomy Quick Bit.
finishes finishes, right? You need some more kibbles.